Hello, in this lecture we're going to work some test type problems, smaller type problems that could fit into the format of multiple choice questions. We have here, a corporation issued 250 shares of its $5 par value common stock in payment of a 3,300 charge from its accountant for assistance in filing its charter with the state. The entry to record this transaction will be what? So in this case, we're going to kind of have to interpret what's going on here. What happened is it looks like we had an accountant do some uh, transaction for us and then send us an invoice the invoice being for 3300 instead of paying cash for that invoice 3300 check we are going to issue stock we decided on 250 shares at five dollar par what does that mean to us it means that the 250 shares we're assuming has a market value of 3300 because we're uh, we're going to exchange for that value so the bill was for that much. If we're assuming that we're going to pay 250 in shares, then the 250 shares must be equal to the 3,300 price. Now you might be saying, well, where does the $5 par value work into that then? Remember that the $5 par value does not represent the market value of the stock. It's just an arbitrary number so that we have a standard set number for all shares of stock when we see it on the financial statement. So let's see what this would look like. If we got a bill from the accountant, it might be going to accounting expense or legal and professional expense. Some kind of expense account is going to go in here. That's going to be the debit for 3300 That's the bill we got. Then we're going to issue the common stock. I'm just going to say common stock is going to be issued. Now we issue it at just the standard par value. So we're going to say I'm going to make it a negative to make the credits negative. It's going to be the 250 times 5. That's what we're going to issue. Now, of course, the debits do not equal the credits here because, once again, that 250 times 5 is just an arbitrary number that we're going to issue the stocks for, and we got to put the difference into an account called additional paid in capital. So I'm not going to type it all out, but it's additional paid in capital. And so we're going to say that's going to be the plug. 3,003 minus the 1,250 means we have an excess of additional paid in capital of 2. 1050. I'm going to do that with the negative sum function. I mean, I'm going to say negative instead of equals. SUM, summing this up, this number minus this number, this number plus that negative number, and then flip the sign. That's where we put a negative in front of it. And that means that this minus this minus this equals zero, or the credits here equal the debits there. And that's what we have. So remember, when we issue the stock, we're going to issue it at the par value and then put the difference in the additional paid in capital. So really the, the, the common stock and the additional paid in capital is the investment uh, that has been input. Next one says that prior to May 1st, company has never had any treasury stock transaction. A company purchased 280 shares of its common stock on May 1st. So we purchased our own stock, that's treasury stock, for 14,000. On July 1st, it reissued 140 of these shares for $52 per share. On August 1st, it reissued the remaining treasury stock at $49 per share. What is the balance in the paid in capital treasury stock account at August 2nd? Okay, so what first when we first bought it back, it's going to be treasury stock that we that we purchased back. And even though it's in the equity section, it's kind of like an, another asset. We treat it almost as if we purchased another company, meaning. We're going to put it on there as a debit, but not in the asset section, in the equity section. And we paid $14,000 for it. And uh, we're going to credit cash, just like if we purchased someone else's stock. Now, what we have to do is track that. we got to say, okay, well, what does it cost per share then if we purchased our own stock back at that time? We're going to, we're going to say that the number of shares for treasury stock shares is going to be, uh, we purchased... 280 shares for a total cost. I'm going to put this over here. A total cost of 14,000. Therefore, the cost per share is going to be the the, diff, the div, dividing those. 14,000 divided by 280 would then be the cost we paid per share. So we got to kind of figure that out. It's going to be the 14,000 divided by the 280. That means it costs $50 per share. So just like when we sell any other type of share we're gonna have to figure out okay well if we sell it we're gonna sell it for whatever the market price is could be greater or less than this fifty dollars per share we generally put the difference into this uh, treasury stock the uh, sorry the paid in capital for the treasury stock 
So that's what we need to track now. So the first thing that happens or the next thing that happens on July 1st, we reissued 140. So we reissued, resold our treasury stock, which we purchased and now we're putting it back on the market. We're gonna get cash for that sale. We sold it for 52, even though we bought it for 50. So we kind of have like a gain, but since it's on our own stock, it's all gonna be in the equity section. We're not gonna put a gain to it. So we're gonna say this equals, the cash is going to be 140 times $52 per share. We got 7,280. And then we're gonna credit the treasury stock to take that off the books, but we're gonna take it off the books at the $50 because that's the cost that we bought it for. So we're gonna say this is, I'm gonna say it's a negative, just to make it a negative 50 times 140 shares that we sold. And that comes up to 7,000. And of course, 7,000 minus the 7,280 uh, means that we need 280 on the credit to make our debits equal to credits. So I'm gonna say this is the negative sum of these, which means this plus that negative, which is a subtraction problem, flip the sign, so that our credits equal to 7280, which equals the debits. Now, if this was a normal stock sale, we would put that into a gain, meaning we got more cash than we purchased it for. But since it's treasury stock, it's all in the equity section, this is what is gonna be, we're gonna call this paid in capital treasury account. I'm just gonna copy and paste that here. That's gonna be the credit. And that's what we're kind of trying to track. So I'll paste that here too. That's gonna to be, whoop, that's not what I wanted to do. I just wanna paste it normal. And we'll make our T account here like this as well. So I'm just gonna make a T account and say that we're going to underline this and put the T here. And da, 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 where's my left? All right. And so we have this in here at this point, the 280. And then of course, we have another activity that happens. We sold the rest of the treasury stock on August 1st. Uh, it reissued the remaining 49 per share. What is the balance from the paid in treasury stock at, the, at August 2nd? So the next one, we said cash. Now we've got another 140 shares we sold, but now we sold it for $49, even though we purchased it for 50, so times 49. And then we're gonna take the, um, the treasury stock off the books for that 140 times 50 because that's what we bought it for and then again we're going to have this account paid in capital which is going to be the plug in this case it's got to be a debit though and i know i have my debits and credits not in perfect order but we're going to do it this way because it's quick so now my debits equal the credits 7000 7000 and obviously and and if it was someone else's stock that would be a loss in this case again it's going to go into that paid in capital so now we have a debit in the paid in capital. Credits are still winning, so the balance in the paid in capital at this point would equal the debits minus the credits. Credits are winning by the by the um, 1,040. So that's what we have there. We can go ahead and do our double underline thing here. And that's what we have in the paid in capital treasury stock. Next one says that a company paid uh, 60 cents in cash dividends per share. Its earnings per share is $4.32 and its market price is $28.50. So its cash dividend yield is what? So when we talk about the, the dividend yield, we're trying to, what we're comparing, it's gonna be a ratio. Many of these kind of uh, estimations of value are gonna be ratios. We're gonna compare the amount of dividends we got compared to the market price. So we're gonna say the dividends paid, we got the dividends, dividends are 0.6. And I'm gonna go ahead and add decimals to all of these because we're gonna need to see some decimals, some pennies here. So we got 0.6 and we're not talking about the earnings per share in this case, we're talking about the amount that we actually got paid in dividends. The earnings, we can't take that out because as a stockholder, we can't take out the earnings. So we could still do calculations on the earnings per share, but what we're talking about in this particular calculation is the actually cold cash that we actually got re received from the company in the form of dividends. So we got the 0.6 and then we got the market price. Market price being 28.5. And if we divide those out, I'm gonna underline home tab font underline. And then we're gonna say it's the 0 0.6, 60 cents divided by the 28.50 and that gives us 0 0.02, we're gonna make that a percent. So we're gonna to go to the home tab, numbers, percentize it, and then add a couple decimals. 
So it's 2.11%. That would be the dividend yield.